August, it's a busy time of the year, back to school, back to school shopping, school supply lists. Hopefully you were able to knock out everything on your school supply list in one shot at one store, but maybe, just maybe, the store you were at was out of red pens or clear glue sticks, so you had to go to another store before you could officially cross everything off your list. But that kind of back-to-school shopping doesn't include an outfit for the first day of school or all the necessities, all the other clothes that are going to go in that top dresser drawer. And it doesn't talk about, it doesn't cover replacing shoes or sandals or soccer cleats to replace the ones that are all worn out or, or don't fit anymore. And you think about, well, you, your children need a new backpack, do you need a new lunchbox, are there any gadgets, any electronics they're going to need? If you set aside a whole day for that kind of back-to-school shopping, did you realize, well, I'm going to still need another afternoon, another morning, another evening to really finish all that up? And we didn't, we didn't really talk about doctor visits and sports physicals and immunizations. Is there paperwork you still have to do, forms to fill out online, or paper forms to, to fill in? Maybe you still got to deal with TADS online, get that all squared around before school starts, at least here at Gethsemane on, on Wednesday. All these things that we, we need to do, all these places we, we need to go, and then you're thinking, you know what, I still got to do. I still got to write my child's name and all those wonderful school supplies I just purchased the other, other day. Or, or maybe you're thinking about, oh, we got to pick up the, the books off the desks today so we can take them home and, and make book covers out of those brown paper grocery bags. And hopefully we get that right the, the first time. We remember how that works from previous years so we don't have to fold it like eight times or burn through three bags just before we get the first one done. August, it's a busy time. So many things to do, so many places to go, so many things on, on the mind but doable, manageable. We'll get them all done in a week. We'll look back and say, oh, that wasn't that, that bad. But what about finding a job? Maybe you're out of work. Finding a job? Time-consuming, isn't it? A, a resume, searching, posting, interviews, callbacks, some anticipation, some, some excitement, only to get some letdown, some disappointment. Uh, you're not the person we have in mind, overqualified. And you begin to question the whole situation, why you're out of work in the first place, and then you begin to, to doubt yourself. Maybe you're, maybe you're searching for that significant other. Maybe you're looking for a special friend, a, a future spouse, and you're putting yourself out there. You're going on, on dates, a friend of a friend of a friend, a, a blind date, or maybe it's a, a group date, and there's small talk, but always the odd person out. Or maybe there's a second date. And again, the excitement, the anticipation, this is going really well. I kind of like this person. But then the next day, there's no callback. There's, there's no text. And you're like, oh, i got to do this all over again. Maybe you're planning a wedding. Got to pick a date. Got to pick a venue. You got to pick the people that are going to be involved in the wedding. The people who are going to stand up. The people who are going to attend. You got to pick food. You got to pick out a cake. You got to pick out a dress. Got to set a budget, and hopefully you don't have any arguments about the budget for the wedding. Maybe you're setting out to sell a home or, or buy a home. So many things to do to clean up the house, to repair the house, to fix it out. Set it up, stage it, get it ready for showings and viewings coming and going. You're out looking at, at other homes. You're thinking about where do we want to live, what part of town, downtown, in town, out of town. Something bigger, something smaller, something newer, something older. You think you got one, and you put in an offer, and you're outbid, or you're underbid, or you don't get it, or it falls through, and you got to do it all over, and you run out of time. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's a big project at work. There's, there's deadlines, there's stress, there's, there's hiccups, there's difficult people to work with. Some, some people aren't pulling their own weight, and you got to pick up the slack, or you end up doing it all just because you want it done a certain way, or you don't think anyone else can help you the way you want to be helped, and so you're going in early, and you're staying late, and you can't leave work at work. It's constantly on your mind. You stress, you worry. You're going to get it all done, get it all done on time. Maybe it's just the house. Maybe it's just home. Maybe it's just the day-to-day, -day, the, the weekly, you know, the shopping and the cooking and the laundry and, and the cleaning and the yard work and the repairs and, and the bills and getting the kids from here to there to everywhere. They got practices, rehearsals, games. Maybe they have jobs they got to get to. 
What do all those things have in common? So finding a job, finding a, a spouse, planning a wedding, buying a, a new home, getting things done at work, getting things done at home. What do they all have in common? They all consume us. Don't they? they? They consume our time. They consume our energy. They consume our focus. They consume our thoughts. They consume our prayers. We, we need a job. We want a, a future spouse. We want everything to go smoothly on our wedding day. We want the perfect house in the perfect place at the perfect price. We want the job to go well. We want to be recognized. We maybe even want the promotion. We want this to be our career. We want everything to go smoothly at home without losing our sanity. And so we pray. And we pray some more. And we pray again. But what else do all of those things have in common, a, a new job, a, a spouse, uh, a wedding, a, a home, a career, the day-to-day, -day. what do they all have in common? Or, or whatever, whatever's consuming you, maybe it's none of those things, what's consuming your time, your energy, your focus, even your, your prayer life, what do they all have in common? There was little talk about Jesus in any of those things. There was little talk about spiritual things, things like forgiveness and salvation and heaven. There's little talk about the gospel in any of those things. Little talk about the blessings of the Lord's Supper, the, the importance of our baptism, the joy of worship, the need for Bible study, there was little talk about our identity as God's children here on earth. Little talk about our need to be a neighbor, as we heard two weeks ago, to be a neighbor to those in need around us. Little talk about our role in the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. Little talk about being lights in this dark world or being the, the salt of the earth. Well, there was prayer, a lot of prayer. And we prayed some more about all those things. And there was joy and disappointment. There was hope and despair. There was little talk about Jesus. And a lot of talk about earthly things, earthbound things. Things that in the end, if we're being honest, will all perish, spoil, and fade. Why do you think Jesus' disciples asked him to teach them how to pray? Do you really think it was because they didn't know how to pray? Do, do you think that they were, they were thinking to themselves, Jesus is holding out on us here. Jesus is holding back here. We're ready for the next chapter, the next unit in our instruction. We haven't even gotten, we've been with them how many years? We haven't even gotten to prayer yet. Come on, Jesus, show us the goods. Do you think they wanted to see if Jesus actually knew as much about prayer as John the Baptist is? Because, after all, he was the one who had taught several of them how to pray. Do you think they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray because they wanted to keep up with the Pharisees? They didn't want to be outdone by the Pharisees because, after all, they were known about their active prayer life and their public prayer life. I doubt it. I doubt any of those reasons are the reasons why Jesus, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Don't you think they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray because they saw him do it. They saw how often he did it. They saw how regularly he did it. They saw how naturally he did it. Don't you think those disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray because they heard him do it? And when they heard him do it, they realized his prayers are nothing like our prayers. Maybe their prayers are a lot like our prayers, earthbound with earthly goals. Regardless of why, regardless of why the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, Jesus knew what he needed to teach them about prayer. 
And he did that by teaching them the Lord's Prayer. But you see, the Lord's Prayer is more than just a prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a mindset. The Lord's Prayer is a way of life. The Lord's Prayer reminds us, it encourages us to set our minds on things above and not on earthly things. The Lord's Prayer reminds us, it encourages us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. The Lord's Prayer reminds us, it encourages us to view life from God's perspective rather than our own and to seek what He desires rather than what we want. How? How does the Lord's Prayer do all of that? Well, there are seven petitions or requests. Actually, there are seven little prayers that make up the Lord's Prayer. But only one of those petitions deals with things here on earth. The fourth petition, when we ask God to give us this day our daily bread. But even in that petition, there's a whole lot of faith, there's a whole lot of trust. It just says, take care of me today, Jesus, and tomorrow we'll do it all again. The six other petitions, the three at the beginning, the three at the end, all deal with spiritual things. Things above, you might say. Spiritual things like who God is and, and what he does. Spiritual things like who we are and our relationship with him and the things that can threaten our relationship with him. The Lord's Prayer is more than just a prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a mindset. It's, it's a way of life. And so when Jesus taught his disciples this prayer, he wasn't just teaching them the prayer, he was modeling the prayer for them and everything he said, did, and thought. And when Jesus spoke these words to his Father in heaven, he wasn't just speaking the words. He was living those petitions. He was living those words. An example? The night before his death, his death on the cross, Monday, Thursday, Jesus is with his, his disciples. They're in the upper room. They're out in the garden. And, and somewhere in between, Jesus prays. It's called his high priestly prayer. And he prays for himself. He really did. Jesus prayed for himself, but he didn't pray selfishly. His prayer went something like this. He said, Father, I pray that you are honored. I pray that you are glorified. I pray that you are praised as I faithfully and obediently carry out your plan of salvation and walk the way to the cross. And then Jesus, in this high priestly prayer, he prayed for his disciples. But he didn't, he didn't pray that they would find a different job outside of ministry after he ascended back into heaven. And he didn't pray that they'd be successful, super successful fishermen. And he didn't pray that they'd have a beautiful home overlooking the gorgeous Sea of Galilee. No, he prayed that they would grow in their faith. And he prayed that they would flee temptation. And he prayed that they would spread his word. And then Jesus, in this same prayer, the night before his death, the night before he would die for the whole world, thinks of you, and he thinks of me, and he prays for all of us. But his prayer wasn't that we'd find this special someone in our lives to make us happy, and he didn't pray that we'd be able to cross off everything on our to-do list at home and at work. This is what Jesus prayed for you, what he prayed for me. He prayed that we'd be brought to faith in him. And he prayed that we'd remain in faith in him. And he prayed... He prayed that we would live with him forever in heaven. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. You better believe it. When we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, when we set our minds on things above and not on earthly things, when we view life from God's perspective and not our own, when we seek what he desires and not what we want, when we remember that we are bright lights in this very dark world, when we embrace the fact that we are the salt of the earth, seasoning hate with love and guilt with forgiveness and despair with hope, when we remember that we, like Abraham and those before us, are just strangers and aliens on this earth, looking forward to a better home, a better country, a heavenly one. 
Do you think Jesus had any doubt that his Father in heaven would forgive those who didn't know what they were doing? That, that was his prayer as he's being crucified. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Do you think Jesus trusted that his Father would answer that prayer? Do you think Jesus trusted that his father wouldn't abandon him to the grave or allow his body to see decay as he prayed, as he's about to die, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit? Of course he didn't doubt. Of course he believed. Because he's viewing things from God's perspective and he was seeking what God desires. The Lord's prayer was his mindset. The Lord's prayer was his way of life. That's true for us, too. By faith, through faith in him, by grace, credited to us freely through the work of the Spirit. That fact that we are holy and righteous and pure and sinless and innocent and forgiven in Christ, that fact can't help but change not only our prayer life, but our way of life. Not only what we ask God for, but why we ask him for it. As we all, with his help, set our minds on things above. Amen. Please stand.